Hi there and welcome, it's Richard Pierce here from builderjoomlawebsite.com with a website review. This is the first of what I hope will be a whole bunch of these website reviews. I've received a whole lot of requests, so I might as well go through them. Uh, what I'm going to be doing in these videos is picking two or three things that just jump out to me uh, when I have a look at websites. I'm not necessarily correct in all of these, but I'm hopeful that you will be able to digest this information and decide whether or not the sort of points that I'm covering would be helpful for your own website. With this first one, we're having a look at an attorney called Daniel Kaminsky, and there are three things that I'm going to talk about. Uh, as I go through, you might like to ask yourself, well, are they the three most important things that you could find on this site? Uh, and if you disagree, well, feel free to put your own comments in beneath this video. The first thing I'm going to have a look at is the actual URL that I was given for this site, which is lawofficersofdanielkaminski.com. I don't have any issues uh, with that domain as such, but from a technical point of view, just be aware that there is an issue with the way that this has technically been set up. If you type in www.lawofficersofdanielkaminski.com, you get the same website, and sure enough, that's what you'd expect, yeah? Well, yes, from a user's perspective, that is the correct thing to do. However, from a search engine perspective, it's not. You should actually only have one of those two options working, either the www version or the non www version. Uh, the convention is to include the w's, I'll come back to that though. Uh, and the reason for this is because in the search engine's eyes, Google and the rest will actually see those two addresses as separate websites. The reason that's a problem is because they can get confused and they're not sure which address to actually put into the index. And in some cases, you'll get some pages with the www and you'll get some pages without. Now, in Google's case, for example, you can go into their Google Webmasters tool and specify which of the addresses should be indexed. However, it is still preferable to set the sites up in such a way that uh, one of them redirects to the other. And so the convention is that if somebody types in the address without the Ws, there's a script that will then redirect them to the www version. There's technically, and from an SEO perspective, no reason why you can't do it the other way, that is have it just working with the non-WW version, that's really up to you. Uh, but like I say, the convention is to do it this way. Now with a Joomla site, you can do this either using a search engine friendly extension such as MyJo SEF, or if you're a little bit more technically inclined, you can add some code to your .ht access file. Uh, and if you are familiar with that, great. If not, uh, do a search. Here's one particular site that has some information about this. Uh, they're called 301redirects.net and you'll find some information there uh, on the appropriate code to add to your .htaccess file. So that's the first thing. Please consider having just one of those addresses working uh, to help the search engines know which version to index and also to help the authority of your site. All websites have an authority value, uh, which is better known in Google's case as PageRank, and that PageRank gets split between those two addresses if they both work. So you can actually possibly make a small search engine ranking improvement by just having one of those addresses working. The second thing I'd like to talk about is the placement of the content on this home page. The content itself I think is fine, in, in fact I think it's better than a lot of the home pages I see. You've got the logo up the top left, which is where the logo uh, by convention goes, the phone number up the top right, so there's a good call to action there, some introductory text and a decent amount of introductory text as well. And incidentally, if you're never quite sure what to write there, the process I generally go through is to answer these five questions. Uh, who are you? What do you do? How do you do what you do differently to everybody else that does what you do? I know that's not terribly good grammar. Uh, why should I do business with you? And how do I do business with you? If you can answer all of those questions in a few paragraphs like this site does, then you've done well. So there's that introductory text, there's a couple of blog posts off to the right, there's a search uh, function, and then further down the page, I'll just scroll down a little, you can see some uh, categories there in the various areas of law uh, that Daniel practices. 
So what's the problem? Well, it comes down to resolution. On my large monitor here, it's all fine. I can see that uh, there's some areas down the bottom. And you would know from your own web browsing that most people, when they get to a home page, tend to scan rather than read a lot of detail. They're just trying to get to the part of the site that is relevant to them. So I still think it's a nice idea to have some long introductory text, but I would like to see these categories much more prominently. And there's a couple of ways that this could be achieved. First of all, you could do it in the menu bar. That top navigation uh, section, home, about Dan, areas of practice, uh, that's fine, but they, they're not so important. Those links could go perhaps in a secondary menu somewhere else, maybe off to the right hand side, and instead have those main areas of law in that top menu. I think that'd be much more prominent there. Uh, people won't need to scroll necessarily. You see, if you've got a smaller uh, resolution than mine, let's say uh, 1440 by 900. That's what happens to the page. And although you can still see the top of uh, the images, you might not be smart enough to know that when you scroll down that these are in fact links. If you reduce it even further, they disappear completely. You might think, oh, come on, people know how to scroll on web pages. Yeah, well, they do, but when they're looking through a number of different websites uh, and it's not really obvious, then it's not ideal. So, yes, you would need to scroll quite a bit to be able to see that resolution. So, if we just jump back to the way I had it, Uh, the first thing, thing you could do is, yes, put those links up the top. You could also just move these objects around on the page and actually bring those links right up to the top and have the other content a little bit further down because these are the most important areas. So that would be another option. Uh, the third thing you could consider, though, is actually creating some anchor text in that introductory text. So if you really didn't want to change the design or the layout, uh, you keep it as it is, but what you could do instead is to actually put some anchor text in here. So when you get to this third sentence, he now handles criminal defence, becomes a link through to the criminal defence page. Same for all of these areas. Just make them links. Okay. Uh, also, from a, an SEO perspective, there's a bit of an issue here. Uh, because this is kind of technical and, and I'd recommend you uh, go and have a look at our SEO for Joomla webinar replay that I did a couple of weeks ago, which is in our blog or on our YouTube channel. Uh, this, this is not one of the points I'd discuss, but whenever you're linking through uh, to another page, it's best to have your link, your first link. How can I explain this? There's this thing called first link preference, and the problem here is this image is the first link, and that's the only one that Google will index or pay attention to. Uh, it actually kind of ignores the anchor text here beneath it. So it would be a really good idea, and th this would be my solution, uh, would be to actually make these uh, text references here links through to the internal pages. Okay, so we've talked about the www address and also uh, getting the call to action items higher up the page, above the fold it's called. The third thing that I'll talk about is colour contrast. Now, to the vast majority of the population, this isn't such an issue. But for a reasonable number of people, the colours that are used here don't have enough contrast and will be difficult to read by some people. Uh, and that's a problem for the obvious reason that you are isolating uh, a group of visitors that will find it difficult to uh, move further th through the site. But there might also be a legal issue depending on the area that you're in. Probably not ironically here for this attorney, but if you had a government department, for example, there are all sorts of rules and guidelines on how websites are built, and one of them is colour contrast, uh, so that it ensures that the widest range of people possible uh, can access the website. And so the difficulty is that the foreground colour and the background colour are a little bit too close. So the foreground colour refers to the text. The background colour is, well, the background colour behind the text. Uh, let's have a look at a particular tool here uh, called the Colour Contrast Check. 
And what I did was I went ahead and put those colors in. Actually, let me put that back to where it was. It was closer to about there. That's not pixel perfect, that's about right. So this is the foreground color of the text that's used in this welcome to the website for the law officers of Daniel Kaminsky. So that's that text color. And then the background color is this sort of ready maroon color, which is what I've put in the second box. So what you can do is put the, the two uh, hexadecimal values in. If you're a designer, you know all about that. Uh, and this right-hand results box will show you, first of all, what it looks like and it gives you a couple of figures. Now, in this example, there are two things to have a look at. I'm just going to see if I can get my on-screen pointer behaving, which it doesn't seem to want to today. Okay, that's annoying, but this first one here you'll see should be greater than or equal to 125 so we're just okay the second one though is color difference this is the color contrast and that's the one that you need to really be aware of so it's giving us a value here of 277 at the moment whereas it should be greater than or equal to 500 how do you do that well one of the things that uh, you could do is just play with these sliders in the various foreground and background colors until you get that number a little bit happier uh, the one that i played with was saturation and by dropping that right down, we find that we can get it above that 500 value. Uh, this is a nice tool because as you use it, the text color changes uh, on the fly, so you can actually get an idea of what that would look like. You can then take that value and make a change, as I've tried to do here, to see what the end result will be. Now, there's going to be a bit of tension here. Designers design a particular way and they might argue that, well, it's such a small proportion of the population, big deal, that's the colour I want to use. And I can kind of see where this design has gone. They've wanted to have that sort of gold look to the site and that's why uh, I guess they've chosen that colour. But if you do want to keep everybody happy, as I recommend you do, uh, this might be a better solution. It might not be. I'm not pretending to be a designer. But uh, you could play with some other color combinations to see what is uh, a greater contrast. So what I've done is I've tried to copy that font and uh, I know there's a typo there. Uh, I've got a bug in my version of um, Fireworks. Uh, to give you an idea of the, uh, the contrast there, so that's my version. That's the after effect. Let's have a look at the original again. You might like to comment below if you think that makes sense. When choosing colors, there's a, a number of tools that you can use online to help you uh, come up with colors. Uh, one I've used in the past is this thing called the Online Color Schema. Just search for that, Online Color Schema, and you'll find this. Uh, the nice thing with this tool is that if you get to a color that's kind of close to what you like, you can click that and then say, continue to make it lighter. And then you might find some other matching colors here, or you can darken it. Or you can find some palettes at, this is a great site, this is called colorlovers.com and you can search through all sorts of different color combinations that uh, you might find useful for your website. So there we have three things that I found on this particular website that I thought could be improved. Uh, we talked uh, about the color contrast, we talked about having those call to action buttons above the fold of the page and also getting the www and non www addresses effectively pointing to the one website. Now website design is an incredibly subjective area and so those points are not necessarily uh, right and certainly not all of the things that I could have picked on this page or this site. What do you think? Tell us below in your comments. Uh, be interesting to hear your feedback. And tell us also if you found this useful and if there are some points there that you would be able to incorporate into your own website. I hope to bring you some more of these in the future. But for now, thanks very much. It's Richard Pierce from builderjumlawebsite.com. See you next time.